everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Crow. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got these really dinky sweet wrapper boxes. Now I've made something similar before, um, but this is a completely enclosed box and it's a self-closing box as well. So the inspiration for this came from these tiny little chocolates, which are gorgeous. Um, and they've got the little, you can see there, all the little kind of um, markings all along the side there, which I've recreated with the scoreboard just again to kind of give that more authentic sweet wrapper look. But basically you just kind of pop open the sides here and then out pop two of these chocolates. So these make lovely little gifts. Um, they would look great um, as little party favours. Um, I've made the bow as well. This bow um, I've done a separate tutorial for, so I'm not going to show you how to make that today, but I'll put a little link up here when that when I come to that bit, just so you can see how it's made. Um, this one is one and three eighths of an inch um, on all four sides, and length it comes in at five and a half inches when it's in its 3D form. When it's flat, it's six inches. So it's just using one sheet of six by six um, card and then obviously just your pattern paper and this piece here. But you may not even need to put the bow or this on. You can just keep them all um, plain and have them in a big basket and they could be nice favors for people to take maybe at the end of a party that way. Now I've also done a whopper. So this is the bigger version. Um, which I originally done first and I thought actually these look better I think like this I think they're really cute but if you do want to do one this is with one sheet of 12 by 12 and I'll put the dimensions for this one in my uh, blog okay but once you see how it's done you can see as long as it's a square size um, then you'll be able to do this in any size you want so 10 by 10 8 by 8 um, yeah every other size in between that so pop that one to one side um, leave all that there so you are going to need just a few simple bits and pieces so there's my little bow all ready to go you need four pieces of one and one eighth of an inch by three and that's to decorate your four sides and then you need your one sheet of six by six so first of all Make sure I'm all in here. So along your six inch side, you want to score at half an inch. At the right end of my pen, uh, stylus there. So half an inch, and then one and three eighths of an inch, then four and five eighths of an inch, and five and a half. Okay. Then you're going to rotate your card, and then you'll need to bring in a ruler. So I'm just going to grab my metal one here. And you want to lie your ruler down so that it is against just coming up to the one and three eighth marker. So pop your stylus in at one and three eighths and then pop the ruler just next to it. You're going to miss the first section, so that first score line and the second section, and you're just going to score. So pop your stylus down and it will go in the little valley at one and three eighths of an inch and score that down to that score line and then you'll be left with this score line and this score line. So if I just bring it up, basically all you're doing is scoring within this section at, one, at each of those same, so one, I'm gonna talk you through them all, but you're just gonna score each of those ones that I give you, you're just scoring within this. So you, you're missing this piece here, because we're gonna score that all in a minute, but you're missing this section, so past that first score line here, and then you're starting from the second score line from the top, and then you're finishing here, and then you'll have that bot, which is the second, the, well, we've got one, two, it's the third score line. So you're scoring to the third, and then you're leaving to the fourth, and then to the bottom. So that one's at one and three eighths of an inch. Then come along, pop your stylus at two and three quarters of an inch. Pop your ruler down. Your ruler is just a guide for you to be able to hover your stylus past that first score line, down to that second score line. It will sit in the little well where it needs to. Okay, and that's at two and three quarters, and then just score within those two score lines. Then go along to four and one eighth of an inch. Again, pop your stylus in, hover it over until you get to that second score line, and then score. So that's the four and one eighth. The last one then is five and a half. So again, pop your ruler in. And your stylus. Make sure the stylus sits in, then put the ruler in because the ruler is just a guide for you, remember. And then just bring it, hover it over, and then start again from that second score line and just score down to the next one. Okay, so you're doing four score lines 
within this large area that you've got. And the reason we're, we're missing this section is because if you were to continue it, you'd have a score line here and here, and it would just ruin this front of that sweet wrapper style. We want it completely plain. So once you've done that, rotate it back again. I'm sorry, keep it in the, the same orientation so you've just done those four score lines. And then what you want to do is at every one eighth of an inch, so every single score line, you're going to score but just to the first score line. So all the way along, and this is what creates that little, so this is purely decorative, but it gives you, I think, a really nice effect to make it look like a sweet wrapper. And I'm literally just scoring to that first score line at every single um, score line that there is, every one eighth, all the way along. Okay, now I've already done that side, so then I'm going to rotate it round, and I'm actually going to do this one here. Now, when you've done them, so I'm going to just do these ones for a minute. Okay, so they're all done. Once you've done them, rotate it back round and just go back over your half inch score line and your five and a half inch score line. And basically it will just tidy up if you've gone over just a little bit, but it will give you that nice crisp score line again because that's what, that's what creates our closure. So when that pops back into place, that's what closes our box. So just go back through those score lines again. Okay, so that is what you should have so you'll have all those little score lines then you've got one score line another score line then you will have four score lines in the middle and then these ones again and then all the little ones there i will have a little template of how it should look on my blog okay but hopefully i've explained that enough for you also what i must remember is that last one so the one that you've done at five and a half in the middle it doesn't have to be you can actually just score it right the way through Okay, so from five and a half, just score all the way down on that one. Okay, because that's our um, tab, that's what's holding it all together. Okay, so other than that, so it's three actually that you have that are just within that middle bit. The last one can go all the way through. Okay, so now what you want to do is burnish all of your score lines. Um, just do that one, and then you can obviously do these ones. Okay, and that one. Now the middle ones, we're going to have to pinch those because we don't want to create the score line going all the way through, but we do need to help it a little bit. So just kind of just pinch or just bend it. See what I'm doing there? Just, just so it's kind of got a shape that it wants to go into, but we're not, although you can kind of see it's very faint, that you won't notice that when it's all down. But just kind of just fold them just a little bit there. Okay, then I'm going to use some of my red tape here you can use your wet glue um, double sided tape it doesn't matter it's just this is what I've got at hand and I'm just running that along my tab and kind of hogging it against the score line okay and then just make sure all of the air bubbles are out of whatever tape it is even double sided tape rub it over with your bone folder and it will create a much better seal and then because we haven't folded these, you kind of need to like wrap it like that. Okay, so it's a little bit fiddly, but it's worth it because it gives you a really nice effect. And then just very carefully line up your score lines is the best way to do this. So I'm just lining up that one and that one. And do that end first. And then the rest you can then just kind of work it along. But as long as all your score lines meet. There we go. Okay, so at the minute we've kind of got this odd shape, but that's completely fine. Now where we've done our join, you want that to be at the back, and then these two at the front. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start to squash them down, keeping this as straight up, facing upwards as possible. So pinch it up to the score line. Don't worry about this. Now what you want to do is start popping this all in up to that score line. So it is a, you've got to kind of work it into its kind of place. And then again on this side, just kind of squeeze it like so. Now we could score this, but it's not worth it. It's so much easier just to do this and then just pinch. So you're creating a triangle. So it's just like a um, sour cream, um, the bottom of a sour cream um, box. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. So you can see I've just pinched and now that stays closed all on its own. So again, I'll do it on this end. Make sure this is facing upright and then just go down and squeeze 
just squeezing the end bit between your finger and your thumb, just the bit where we've done all those score lines, and then just kind of work your way up. And once it gets to that score line, because you've burnished it, it will naturally just want to take that form anyway, and then just pinch. And again. Now that one's where the join is, so it'll be a little bit thicker because you've got two bits of card over each other. And there you go. And you see what I mean now? So we've not got those score lines. You would have had them continue through there if you'd if you'd done that. I mean, try it. You, if, if you think it'd be easier for you, but it, it might just ruin the overall effect. But I hope you'll agree that's not too difficult to do. What I would maybe suggest is play around on a bit of scrap piece of 6x6 six six first, just so you can get used to you know, kind of that bit with your finger and your thumb, it's the fiddliest part, but yeah, really love it. So now you just want to stick down all of your pieces. So grab that one, where's my glue? So I'm just gonna stick all of these on all four sides. Okay, so I've just decorated those four sides there and then I've got my bow here and I'm just going to splodge a load of glue Again, I go through these so quickly. I feel like every tutorial I'm always trying, kind of shaking out all the bits. Okay, ooh. And then just pop that one. Again, make sure your seam is at the back and this will fit. This is the second smallest one. Okay, so when I when you go to the tutorial, which will be up here now, <laughs> this is the second smallest of the bows. I do five different sizes and um, they're really easy to make. It's using um, some bunting or banner dies that I have, however you can make them with just normal strips and I'll show you how to do that as well. So there we go, just hold that in place a little bit longer. Okay, so that's now stuck down and then you just pop it open, so it just pops at the back and then I can just pop two of those chocolates in and just literally just squeeze it back down, it all just falls back into place. So there you have it. I think they are absolutely adorable, my mini little sweet wrapper boxes. So there you go. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today. I will pop everything else on those sizes for the bigger one in my blog, as always, and all the links to everything. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.